Throughout this video, I'm going to show you the secrets on how to create your own Minecraft blocks and create weird and classic magnetic builds. Let's do this. Recently, a lot of people have been making paper magnetic Minecraft blocks. Well, me and Kami CH at least. And while it looks awesome, nobody is showing how to make them. I mean, just look at this. So if you've been wanting to make blocks of your own or bought thousands of magnets already, rip to my boy. I made it a life's mission to expose those highly kept crafting secrets and teach you how you can make your own blocks. But the real question is, is making these blocks even worth it? First off, you're going to need a printer and some paper. The printer that I personally use is super cheap and you might actually have it. The HP OfficeJet Pro 9018E. That kind of sounds like Elon Musk's next Bruh. kid. But for paper, it is super important that you buy the HP 32 pound premium 100 brightness color lock paper. This paper compared to others made my blocks go from this to this. What the heck? Next, you're gonna need some magnets. Personally, I use these five by two millimeter neodymium ones. You can get hundreds for only a couple dollars, so it's pretty OP. But after that, now we need tools. I have a nice pair of scissors to cut out the blocks or a cutting knife with a mat if you're really careful this folder thingy, some Elmer's glue, or even better, crazy glue, Q-tips, and finally, I'm gonna share with you the first secret to making amazing paper crafts. I use Crayola markers. Just buy a 50 pack or something for a couple bucks, and you'll see how much of a difference this makes when we start crafting. Now currently, I'm trying to work with Mojang to give you guys some templates, but for now, there's only a couple I custom made on my website. Link in description. First, download a template, print it out, wait for it to dry a little bit, sorry mom, and cut out each each block. Now you should have a couple templates ready. Then take the template and fold it from the sides, tops, and then the flaps. As long as you follow the creases, you should be dandy. Once folded, grab some of those Walmart markers and line each of the sides without flaps with the right color. This is gonna turn these blocks from looking like paper to looking like you bought them. Trust me, I've gotten that comment a lot. Now comes the fun part, magnetizing. Now this is where everybody messes up and the reason you clicked on this video. But there are actually two ways to make Minecraft blocks magnetic. The first way is to take a Sharpie and mark one side of the stack of magnets to show that it's north. Remember, Remember, one side is going to attract and the other will say no -uh. so make sure you know what side does what then take three magnets face up and using glue attach them to the middle of the top left and right side of the block then take three magnets face down not the black side and place them on the other sides once you let them dry for at least a couple minutes grab a q-tip untwist the glue bottle and put a small dot onto the farthest flap then rub the glue so it spreads nicely and put the block together from the other side finally glue the flaps on the top, fold it down and use your finger to flatten it out and do the same on the bottom. Boom! There is your very own magnetic paper Minecraft block. But unfortunately, we're not even done yet. In order for another block to connect to it, on another block, you have to lay the magnets the same, but in reverse. Except for the top and bottom, because these never change. This way, each magnet attracts to each other, and it'll connect. Basically, you connect them like a checkerboard like this, and everything is nice and smooth. So at the end, you have two different types of blocks. Block A and block B. By the way, the blocks are exactly one inch big all around. I like that size, but everybody has preferences. But here's a quick secret. Most people connect the magnets willy-nilly, and when they connect two blocks, it looks like cheeks. But if you use a one by one inch piece of paper with a small cut in the middle and use a pen to mark the exact middle of each side, this way you know exactly where to glue the magnet and you can accurately place the magnet so the connection is clean. Ta-da! Now once you make a whole bunch of them, just connect them together and have fun with those satisfying sounds. But the only downside downside of making blocks this way is how hard it can be. My last video had over 300 blocks. If you use six magnets a block, that's 1800 magnets. I spent days making those blocks. So the second way to make these blocks is simply by printing a template, cutting the blocks out, bend them up, lining with markers, and then before magnetizing, fold the blocks with the top open, drop some sort of magnet inside, glue the top down, and now the magnets will just fly to a certain side that you want to connect to. It's easy, cheaper, and takes up half the time. Also, if the blocks don't connect perfectly, just move them around. Easy! Now I know the blocks will only be able to connect to one side, but what's better? Making six blocks an hour or 10 to 15? As long as it looks good, people will be super impressed. But this brings me to my next point. Making magnetic blocks can be super cool, but it can also make you go nuts. If you mess up any part of
of the process, the magnets could fall off inside the blocks, the paper might look all gluey, the blocks could not connect well. There are endless problems because magnets want to be free. However, if you want to have fun crafting and do some awesome stuff, go ahead and make them. I'll definitely have my own templates for you guys to use and links to everything down below. But there is another option that might be better. Now you can buy them. Recently, some Chinese shops have been making plastic magnetic blocks that look really similar to Minecraft and selling them in kits. However, they take a while to make and ship, almost three weeks. The textures are not exactly Minecraft, and legally, they can't even create many new blocks. However, you get a bunch of these plastic blocks all at once. And what's even better, I have my own shop where I partnered with one of these sellers where you can buy these blocks hassle-free. So now you have two options, make these blocks and spend time crafting, or buy a kit with plastic ones. I love both, but to be fully honest, if you don't have much time, buy the blocks. However, now that you know how to make these blocks, I'm gonna create some builds and show you how creative you can be and give you even more things to make. Just wait, cause at the end of the video, you'll know how to make moving figures, mobs, and a whole lot more. The first build I'm gonna make comes from a subscriber saying, make a water bucket. So to make an item, I photoshopped two buckets on a template and printed them out. Now I grab my epic knife and painfully cut out every pixel. Once cut, I colored the back of the item, put some dots of glue, and fold them together like a sandwich. I also made an empty bucket as well, just so I can do this. We now have an infinite water source. If you played a lot of Minecraft, even this doesn't make much sense, but now I can fill my bucket as many times as I want and flood my table. Looks like Steve is gonna need a boat. Wait, I should make a boat. You guys know the drill. Photoshop, print, cut, ink, sandwich, and ta-da, boat. You can also fit another person on the boat and sail around. W Ocean. If you guys saw, I also started making sand. This really makes the builds more real and Minecrafty. Also, if you look closely at the island, you'll see that there are some pretty special blocks in there. I made my own tall grass. I basically did the same thing with the water bucket and printed it out. But with this craft, I have to cut so many things out. I swear, these tall grasses lower my lifespan. After that, I use the marker and fold together one of them with the glue in between. But I'm not even done. I still have to make an entire other side. Once both halves are made, I cut one of them with scissors and then glued them together like an X. Now you have a custom piece that will make any papercraft world stand out. Let's go. Making special blocks will definitely upgrade your world, but you know what will really impress? Mobs. Everybody loves making them, and I'm gonna show you a special way to make most of them magnetic. The first thing I'm gonna craft is a pig. What's cool about these guys is that they are not square. So basically, we cut a a bunch of different shapes, fold them all, and then glue the different parts together. I also did a special cut technique so that his head can move up and down. But since the pig is lonely, let's make our boy a friend. The next mob that I'm gonna craft is a chicken. While he has a little problem standing up because of his skinny legs, I mainly like to have him sit down and chill. And if you take a closer look to both of these mobs, they are two scale with the blocks, meaning this chicken is about an inch big. So crafting that gobble thing was hard. Now that I can add these to my existing animals, it's starting to feel like Minecraft. The next paper craft I'm gonna build are magnetic characters. If you've seen any of my videos, Steve and Alex's arms can move and hold items, they can sit down and stand up properly, and even their heads move, unless you accidentally glue their head to the body. The way I did this was not too simple, so pay attention! When I created the template for these characters, I made sure that they would be two inches tall. This way they can enter doorways. But before I finish folding the limbs together, you have to glue magnets in both of the arms and then place two more on the inside of the torso to line it up. Once everything dries, then you can finish the folding. For the legs, I cut small slits into the tops of them and brought out a new material. Popsicle sticks! I basically cut them in half and stuck a stick in the legs to connect them with the torso. Just make sure the sticks don't come down too far. We might need to snip snip. Lastly, I put a small magnet into one of the feet so you never have to be annoyed that your character can't stand. Trust me, please do this. Now to make them sit, you just craft new legs, make the slit extend forward more like this, and then when you put these legs on, now our boy sits nice and proper. As you can see, I built Preston Plays, a YouTuber I loved as a kid, and apparently this guy did too. Since we built small, medium, and large paper crafts, just like a McDonald's Bev, I figured we could also do the same for monsters, specifically zombies. If you didn't know, there's actually a mob in the game called a giant, which is literally a zombie that's six times as big. That's 12 blocks tall. So once I scaled everything up and 
Photoshop. I got some printing and just look how many pages we got. The recycling man is gonna be eating tonight. Once I started cutting everything out, I began to realize just how big this thing actually was. He would be a foot long and this ain't no sandwich, bro. Now that everything's folded, I connected all the limbs with magnets and bam, he's huge. Bro, my shoe isn't even the same size as him. But when I put him next to Alex, it legitimately looks like Attack on Titan. Wait, that sounds kind of nuts. Three, two, one, go! Ah, better luck next time, Alex. Wait a minute, what's going on? Whoa! Now this is a fair fight! Anyways, this really makes you think, where am I gonna put this thing? They're literally the size of a Build-A-Bear. With all of these specialty blocks, mobs, and other crafts, you really have so many options when you choose to build and use your creativity. However, if you just wanna have fun with magnets and play with toys, buying the blocks is the move. There might not be exactly what you want, but it still feels like Minecraft. If you wanna support me, please check out my website to see all of my tools, future templates, and buy some blocks. Peace.